Forget all the build-up to Australia. We are concerned with how the IPL teams look after the trade window deadline collapsed and uh, who was retained, who was released and how the teams might well approach the auction. Deep Das Gupta with me on ESPN Trick Info. Before we get into each team, this is a unique IPL. It's going to be in a World Cup year. It's going yeah. to be in an election year. Part of it could be outside India. True. There's a lot of questions around availability. Absolutely. Yeah. And the FTPs as well. Yes. Uh, you know, are quite a few international series happening mm. in and around uh, the IPL. Yeah, it'll be very, very interesting IPL. And I think a lot of teams will it'll, it'll boil down to your domestic cricketers. Mm. How many domestic cricketers and what quality of domestic cricket. It's always been like that, to yes. be honest, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but this year, it's going to be even more important to have really good quality domestic Indian cricket. I mean, there's so much coverage around it. Australia, I've already mentioned, there's going to be limited availability for their World Cup squad and their key one-day players. There's so much cricket in the build-up, like Deep mentions, to the World Cup. So, could be about domestic cricketers, could be about international cricketers from the past that don't play, that aren't active yeah. anymore. Let's go team by team. Deep, we'll start with the yeah. Mumbai Indians. For me, they were underachievers last year yeah. to some degree and they did struggle to find their balance. We're going to first look at their release players. And I remember them put playing JP Dumini quite uh, consistently uh, towards the end because they were unsure of their batting. Now, he gets yeah. released. Pat Cummins is released. Mustafizur Rahman is released. And Akila Dhananja is the other noted international that has gone out. And they've traded Quinton de Kock, interestingly, from RCB. Yeah. So, uh, the first reaction when I saw Quinton de Kock uh, being, being uh, uh, taken in by Mumbai Indians is Rohit will not open at all. Hmm. Last year, at least, he uh, opened the first couple of games and then batted in the middle order. I think straight away, I think Quinton Decock is going to open and Rohit will play in the middle order. That's, this is the first thing that came to my mind. Unfortunately, uh, I think uh, that's going to happen. And as you mentioned, because I think they've, they've made up their mind. Uh, if hmm. Rohit is batting in the middle order, then maybe JP Dumuni, who played a lot of games, as you mentioned last year, yeah. uh, will... Uh, you know, obviously, you don't require him now, as much. Now, I, I, that leaves them with... They've retained a core group of players, yes. which Mumbai like to do, and we know that anyway. But mm. with each year, the questions remain. Is Kyron Pollard still as good as he was last year? So, let's just have a look at the players that they have retained. Now, remember, as a result of this, they only have seven available slots at the auction, so including mm. six Indians and one overseas. So, they can only bank on one big overseas player, whoever that they might choose to. Now, mm. are there still questions on Pollard for you? They've kept Ben Cutting, who had a hot and cold season. Mitchell McClanagan doesn't play international cricket. They yeah. have banked on Jason Berendorf, who will feature in the T20Is against India now. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just looking at the rest of that team. You, essentially the same core it's, as it's the previous It's the same year. core, yeah. I, I mean, if you look at that playing 11, more often than not, you'll get uh, last year's playing 11, apart from maybe JP Doomney, uh, mm. you know, a few here and there. Uh, but the other important question for them is Jaspeet Bumrah. Mm. Is he going to play all 14 games or not? Yeah. Uh, because all uh, even the Indian team management has has kind of indicated that, that they would want the yes, fast bowlers course. to kind of not play all of them, maybe rest uh, a few games. Uh, so that's again a concern uh, as far as Mumbai Indians are, uh, are I mean, concerned. In which yeah. case, you're right. Because if I look at that team, I don't see a second, unlike Sunrise or Hyderabad, they've got lots of Indian fast exactly. bowling options. I don't see anything there. So, they've yeah. obviously got to go big. They, they could go big for an Indian fast bowler. Yeah, because, you know, the good part is they've got the core yeah. together. So, they, I mean, they've got 11.415 uh, mm. uh, CR available yeah. in their purse. So, uh, they just need two, three good buys. And I think they have the money to actually go for those, you know, not look mm. at six, seven, but just sure. look maybe two or three of them. Okay, that's for the Mumbai Indians. Let's move to the Rajasthan Royals then and their season turned upside down courtesy Joss Butler. So, there's no surprise that he was retained. But they relied on a couple of big bash league phenomenons from last year and those have gone out. Just looking at uh, the release players for Rajasthan Royals, out mm -hmm. goes Darcy Short. Jayadev Unatkar went for so much money, uh, mm -hmm. they've released him. So, that opens their purse up significantly. And uh, that essentially gives them almost 21 crore to spend at the auction. They have nine slots that they, they could fill up, up to nine slots, including three overseas players. Yeah. And if I look at uh, just the players that they did end up retaining, I'm a little surprised that they've gone, they've retained Steve Smith. I don't know if you are. Uh, I'm not surprised. I think mm. I'm not surprised because uh, obviously, uh, uh, for whatever reasons, Steve wasn't available in the yeah. last IPL. and. He's back uh, and, and they kind of build that team around Steve, Steve Smith as the captain and I, I won't be surprised uh, he might end up leading the side as well, uh, Steve Smith. Mm. Uh, but I, 
you know, I look at that side and I, and I see a really good side. And now that they've released Unatka, they might get him back. Hmm. Uh, but they've kind of released uh, a good amount of money, 11.5 crores by releasing yeah, that Jaydev. Made, that made auction sense, practical absolutely, sense. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And they might just go get him back. But uh, yes, as far as bowling is concerned, they look a little... Uh, you know, weak on, on that aspect, the fast bowling. So they might look at, I mean, Jofra Archer uh, looked good. He didn't play the whole of yes. last season. So he would be available. Maybe they might just look at a few of uh, the Indian bowlers, maybe get Jadev back. Yeah. The big overseas players, and there are key internationals here. Ben Stokes, Josh Butler, Steve Smith, who we would assume would be just about nearing the end of yeah. his ban at that time, therefore considered for Australia cricket. There isn't a huge depth of overseas options with experience. They might just have a lot of players that might be called up for international duty. Do you see that as an issue for them? Uh, yeah, Joss Butler, mm -hmm. for example, I mean, he was phenomenal and he's in good form. He's in very good form even in international cricket right now. So there's a good chance that they might be looking at some uh, uh, options there as yeah. in overseas players. But again, you've got to be very, very careful and tricky because as we mentioned right mm -hmm. at the top, uh, you know, who's going to be available? That's the big yeah. question. Okay, that's a question for the Rajasthan Royal Think Tank to answer. Let's move to the Sunrisers Hyderabad. They usually approach auctions with a lot of homework and we've seen yeah. that from Tom Moody and co over the years. There is one slot which has opened up now because Shikhar Dhawan has gone to Delhi traded in what looked like a good deal for yeah. Hyderabad with three players from Delhi deal. coming the other way. I think that's the best deal so <laughs> far that has happened uh, because three quality players, yeah. Vijay Shankar who actually made his... Uh, debut for SRH and mm. did well for them mm. with the bat I remember he's getting some runs Shabash Nadeem has been phenomenal yes. right for last couple of years in domestic cricket getting him Abhishek Sharma all rounder no, I like the look of Abhishek Sharma yes. after Delhi were knocked out last year absolutely yeah. Abhishek Sharma looked really good another all rounder uh, predominantly a batsman who can bowl uh, as well I think that those I mean that's one I, I think that's the best trade so far and uh, and and to be fair I mean uh, yes Shikhar did his job for SRH uh, but his job was different when Warner was mm. around. His job was different and hopefully Warner will be available uh, yeah. this, this they're, uh, they're, they're banking yeah. on it because yeah. you look at the release players and I yeah. thought they might want to keep Alex Hales' insurance given that he did have, you could say, a, a reasonably successful season. He was hit and miss in the mm. last year's IPL. But yeah. they've chosen to release Alex Hales. They've chosen to release Chris Jordan, Carlos Brathwaite. So they have released some some key internationals. Saha, of course, we know is nursing an injury, so maybe yeah. that made some sense. So I, to be I think they they will get someone like Saha back, who's been part of the setup mm. for a while now. Uh, they might. I mean, Carlos Brathwaite makes sense because the kind of surfaces that you that they play on. Seven of the home yeah. games are in Hyderabad, where the ball turns, and Carlos Brathwaite last season uh, struggled against the spinners. Uh, so yeah, Alex Hills didn't uh, you know get too many games, but yeah. he could be a good buy again, uh, depending because he's, he's no. also not in the scheme of, I mean, he, he does play in the shorter format for yes. England, uh, but maybe uh, maybe he's available. Okay, so now let's just put that in perspective with the players that they do have. And if you s now look at that team, it's going to be hard to leave Kane Williamson out of the IPL yeah. he had last time. New Zealand has already confirmed that their players will be available for the entire duration, notwithstanding a few international games here and there. But yeah. uh, uh, you've got uh, potentially Williamson and David Warner to open in the absence yes. of a Shikhar Dhawan. I don't know if that is uh, appetizing for you. And I'm looking through the rest of that team. Billy Stanley was good before he got injured. Rashid mm. Khan obviously earns a spot himself. So you think those are your, they've got a set sort of core group That's and right. a lot of Indian fast bowlers. That's right. So only, uh, if you look at the core group, the only person missing would be Shikhar mm. from last year. And obviously with, with Warner available. So they, they don't, they won't miss Shikhar that one. They won't miss Shikhar too much. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, same issue like Mumbai Indians. You've got Bhuvneshwar Kumar, their main mm. strike bowler. Well, uh, well uh, whether he's going to be available for all 14 or not, that's the big question. And but of course, you like know, you even said, last they've year got more reserves though. They've yeah, got Thampi, so they've got Khalil. Yes. Uh, who didn't play much uh, last season, but Khalil Ahmed's turning out to be a different bowler now. True, and, and Bhuvneshwar, mind you, last year as well, did not play quite a few games, if I'm not wrong. He yes, played he did, only yeah. seven and Sandeep Sharma games. came in and exactly. stepped up. Exactly. So they have enough Indian uh, bowling backup, to, uh, so to say, to kind of manage uh, his absence. All right, because they won't have too much shopping to do, but they've got just five uh, players that they can but get I, three Indian, but those two three, overseas. But those three guys, I mean, uh, the three they've got in, Vijay Shankar, yeah. Abhishek Sharma, Shabazz Nadeem, good, good move. All right, so Sunrisers seem to have already done their bid before the uh, auction hammer even goes down for the first time. <laughs> Let's go to our next team, Chennai Super Kings Champions, uh, my favourite team in the IPL, as many of you know. Uh, <laughs> and we do know that uh, MS Dhoni doesn't like changing too much. Yes. And that's exactly what uh, has happened here because they only have 
two slots that they can take. Their squad is almost the same, only two slots. They've released Mark Wood and a couple of Indian uncapped players and uh, that leaves them with only two Indians. The overseas quota is exhausted. 8.4 crore for two Indians is actually a good purse to have if you want to splurge on somebody mm. young. Yeah. Because CSK <laughs> don't have that. So, so it's pretty I mean, much the same listen, thing. Listen, I mean, just to add to what yeah. you mentioned last year yes. during run order, so their average age has gone up by one year. Which t which, is, which would you, I would be worried about, <laughs> but clearly I shouldn't. But let's just look at that team. Dhoni, Raina, Faf Duplessis, it's the all same a year team. older. Of course, yeah. Faf Duplessis, yes. Uh, yeah. but there aren't too many act they've kept Mitchell Santana. I'm very interested to see that yeah. because he missed the last season with an injury. Mm -hmm. They've also kept David Willey, who they brought in as a replacement player. So they're mm -hmm. both in that. Uh, at different times, Bravo, Watson were all revelations. Lungi and Gidi's part of the South African setup. Yes. He's in that team too. Harbhajan Singh, he's got another IPL in him, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, obviously. I mean, <laughs> I saw him and he's working hard, he's looking as fit as ever. Yeah. But the other thing that you mentioned right at the top was a lot will depend on the Indian domestic and mm -hmm. all the internationals were not playing for the country or the retired international. Yeah. So, if you look at that CSK team, there are a lot of those uh, retired international quality players like yeah. Watson, Bravo, Willy is not a regular with the international yes. side. Uh, you know, Sam Billings is, is not He's a regular. also not regular, yeah. Absolutely. So, there are quite a few international uh, players that they have. Uh, I mean, even if from the Indian worry. point of view, you've got Murli Vijay, you've got yeah. Ravindra Jadeja who may not make the World Cup squad, you don't know yeah. what's happening there. Mm. Suresh Raina is not going to, uh, yes. you think, make the World Cup. So, there are a lot yeah. of experienced Indian internationals too. True, true. Yeah. So, I, I think they're, they're pretty much set. Okay, well, let's move on then. Kings 11 Punjab, they are anything but set. They've got a new oh. coach in Mike Hessen. They've let go of Brad Hodge. Virinder Sehwag too has departed, uh, has parted ways with uh, the franchise. They've released quite a few players. Just looking at the list of released players for Punjab, out goes Aaron Finch. Again, Australia have made, uh, so made it clear that they won't have their players available throughout. Uh, Aksar Patel, who's the only player they retained before last year's auction. Mohit Sharma, again, a mainstay for Kings XI for the years. Yuvraj yeah. has uh, gone back into the auction. Barinder Saran, Manoj Tiwari, some of the other noted uh, Indian names that go out and uh, then if you're looking at uh, who they've already traded Marcus Stoinis has left he's been another mainstay for <laughs> Kings 11 and yeah. Mandeep Singh has come back there's a yeah. huge salary cap available 36 crore uh, and a little more on top and available slots are 11 Indians and four overseas but they need to literally build a squad yes and and I mean looking at the number of players and and the players that they've let go it it only uh, uh, you know seems to me that they're looking at a complete revamp of yeah. the side with a new coach coming in but again the key here is not going to be Mike Hessen the head coach I think the key would be the Indian assistant coaches or, or mm. the Indian people uh, who are there on that auction table because uh, you know, they need to, uh, to to get their Indian players sorted there. I mean, you have Lokesh, you have Chris yeah. so let's, let's go to that list. Let's go yeah. to the retain list. Ashwin, you would assume, would captain yeah. and be a key force to deciding what kind of mm. team he wants with Mike Hessen. Uh, Rahul was a revelation in the IPL last year. Chris mm. Gale, they still they still invest in Chris Gale. Yeah. We, we thought they might, you know, there might be a case to again think of True. Gale as a year older, but he yeah. still merits some uh, value. Andrew Tai has been good. And they've got mm. Mayank, Ankit Rajput, Mujib. Karun Nair, David Miller, that's a decent bunch of players to retain. David Miller has been a perennial underachiever though. True, I, I think the, the, the core group is there uh, because uh, Lokesh, Mayank, uh, yeah. Andrew Tai, Mujib, Ankit Dev, uh, Ashwin himself. So you have your basic core, six, mm. seven of them. And then you have the 36.2 uh, CR available in the cap. Uh, which and and if you look at the number of Indians and even overseas players that have been released, if you yeah. look at that list, there are quite a few good players there. Okay. So, you know, they can get it right. Uh, they have the money in the salary cap. Uh, mm. they, they have enough money, uh, but um, yeah. it's, it, it boils into the auction now for them. I'll be fair. It looked good. It looked a good team after the auction last year, mm. Kings XI. Yeah. It looked better when the season started and then just tapered off. Royal Challengers Bangalore did not look a good team after last year's auction. And it seemed a bit bizarre some of the decisions that they did end up making. They mm. left themselves short and they've also now uh, got in Marcus Stoinis. So, that's one good signee to come in. Brilliant they've signing. released... A few interesting players. Brendan McCullum, who Virat Kohli had a lot of faith in, in last season, has gone out. Corey Anderson also who bowled a lot. Uh, four over spells until they got smarter mm. about that. Quinton de Kock has been traded to Mumbai, like we mentioned. And Mandeep, like you said, has gone to Punjab. Chris right. Wokes out. Sarfraz Khan, who they retained, is also out. So, yeah, the big question was, uh, why was he retained last <laughs> year? Yeah, what was the thought behind But anyways. So, uh, ten, 10 slots still available. So, they've got some work to I do think, in this auction. I think, brilliant move. They've already realised the fact that last year, their team was top heavy. Mm. So, they've released the number of openers that they've released. Yeah. Brendan McCullum, Corey Anderson, Quinton de Kock, Mandeep Singh. Four uh, 
openers, top no, order you, batsmen you, released. You, you put Corey Anderson in the opening list. Yeah, but because that's in yeah. the top three. You okay. know, yeah, that's where sure. he bats in the top sure. three. So you, they've released the top order batsmen there. They've got Marcus Stoinis. I think that's again a mm. very good buy or very good trade. Uh, and provided he's available. Provided he's yeah. available. That's mm. a fair point. Provided he's available because yeah. he'll he'll be someone who can bat at number four five and has done well uh, in India sure. batting at four five. Uh, so I think they've realized what they need to do and I think uh, they're going about doing uh, exactly that. Okay, looking at the retained players now, A.B. de Villiers and Virat Kohli, that love affair will resume of course. Yeah. Partiv Patel is there, Chahal is there, Washington Sundar, lots of spin options. Pawan Negi, they've also mm. chosen to keep. Cool to Nile. Moin Ali is someone they have retained, interestingly. Uh, as yes. also Colin de Grandem, Tim Saudi, the New Zealand pair, in spite of Daniel Vittori having parted ways with this mm. franchise. Umesh Adar was big for them, Deep. And again, the yes. same question you've asked the management of the fast bowlers workload. You think Umesh would be part of the World Cup think tank? Yes, but you know, Umesh is not that integral to this RCB as compared to Bumrah and Bhuvi uh, for their respective, for their respective okay. sides. So, yeah, and, and, and they have enough. I think it will be a big series for Mohamed Siraj, a big uh, uh, addition for Mohamed Siraj. I think last six, eight months he's been absolutely fabulous across all formats. Okay. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to keep an eye out for him. You know. All right. Now, let's move over to uh, Kolkata Knight Riders. And they've let go of Mitchell Stark that they managed to get for huge money at last mm. year's auction. Almost inexplicably, you knew Mitchell Stark is not a player you can bank on for an yeah. entire IPL. They've let go of Stark. They've also let go of uh, Mitchell Johnson. So, no Aussie fast bowlers there. Tom Curran, I thought, had an all right sort of season. He found his mm. way out of the side. But they've let go of Cameron Delport and Jevon Sales as far as the overseas goes. And no place for Vinay Kumar, in spite of uh, the veteran that he is in domestic mm. cricket. So, 15 crore salary cap, 7 Indians, 5 overseas. So, they got 12 guys and they have to make, uh, make some additions to that team, which we'll throw up for you now. The retained list, yeah. Dinesh Karthik, Robin Utapa, Chris Lynn, Andre Russell, Narayan, Gil, Chawla. Again, it looks a strong side. Prasid Krishna stood up. Shiva Mavi mm -hmm. was good. Uh, Kamlesh Nagarkoti got injured and you know there's a lot of hope yeah. on him too. Nitesh Rana Rinku Singh did a job when asked. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think they've, they've got their playing 11 there, thereabouts. It's, it's just that uh, obviously Mitchell Stark, uh, his availability has been, be, been questioned mm. uh, quite a few times now. Uh, I mean, for injury reasons and otherwise, uh, Mitchell Johnson obviously, uh, they figured out last year that you know, he's, yeah. he's not in that kind of form anymore. Uh, so, I think... Well, what's this team missing? Is it missing a frontline strike bowler like a Mitchell Stuck, someone to do that job? Yes, I think so. But I think uh, the way Prasid Krishna and and uh, and Mavi bowled, hmm. uh, they look really good. They look really good. But having said that, see, you know, Andre Russell, Sunil Narayan makes a huge difference. Yes, of course. You know, uh, I think uh, Andre Russell with his all-round abilities and a match winner as an all-rounder, hmm. so is uh, Sunil Narayan. It's just that, uh, you know, the playing 11 looks really good. Mm. I think what they really need to look at is a few backup options uh, that they might uh, need with, with Chris Lynn and, yeah. and, you know, maybe DK being part of the World Cup or not. I don't know. Okay. You know. All right. So, yeah. Let's move to Delhi Daredevils. They are always a story before and after <laughs> each IPL auction. And like we've already mentioned, it looked like Sunrisers came off the winners in that swap deal for Shikhar Dhawan and uh, mm. Shabazz, Nadeem, Abhishek, Sharma and Vijay Shankar yeah. going the other way. But looking at who else has been released by the Daredevils, Gautam Gambhir goes out, resigned as captain halfway through the season last time. Jason Roy out, Junior Dala, the South African seamer, Liam Plunkett. I am surprised seeing Mohamed Shami released. I don't know if you are. Out goes mm. Glenn Maxwell. The Again, the perennial disappointment that he is at times in the IPL. Uh, and out goes Gurkiratman, Naman Oja, and even Dan Christian, who's played a lot of IPL cricket over the years. They've mm. got a decent salary cap, deep 25 yeah. and a half crore. They've got 10 players. They can add seven Indian three overseas. And as I look at the team that they have retained, mm. there are a fair few top order batsmen in that list. You've got Shreya yes. Sayer, Prithvi Shaw, uh, you've got Manro, Manjot, Kalra, Shikhar Dhawan, Shikhar Dhawan who's joined in yeah. now. You would what assume Rishabh Pant is top 3, 4, 2. Uh, but what they would be looking for is Indian fast bowlers. If you mm -hmm. look at that list there, I don't see an Indian fast bowler there. Yeah. There is n uh, Avesh Khan is obviously Avesh there. Avesh Khan is there. Harshal Patel, Patel there. but yeah, so someone more to... Yeah, and Avesh Khan and Harshal Patel weren't regular in their yeah. side last year. Yeah. So they would want somebody that they can bank on as far as Indian fast bowling is concerned. Uh, you know what, if I look at it, Jaydev Unatkar went for 11.5 crores, right, hmm. last year and uh, was released this year. Yeah. Maybe RR is thinking they might get him for cheap, but I doubt. Uh, if you look at the Indian fast bowlers available in, hmm. in that uh, release list, 
there are not too many of them. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting because they definitely, definitely need uh, at least a couple more uh, proper... Are, you, are you baffled at the three players they swapped oh for yes. Shikhar Dhawan the other way? Oh, yes. Uh, I, I think... Uh, one of, or even one of those players could have added something to that. Yeah, team. someone like Nadeem or Abhishek for yeah. that matter. Uh, or Vijay Shankar, an all-rounder in there, uh, predominantly a batting all-rounder, uh, I mean, would have, would have made a huge difference. I mean, uh, because yeah, Indian players are like gold dust. Yeah. I mean, you still have to play seven Indian players out of those 11, and especially this year, uh, when you don't know exactly, because everything is in a limbo right now, who's be going to be available, including mm. the Indian international players. Of course. Uh, so, it, it was so important to keep your Indian players, uh, you know, uh, in, in order and, and keep them. Okay, quick uh, roundup of how much money the franchises will have going into that auction. Uh, and you could see that uh, Punjab have a, f have a lot to spend. They are looking to build again under a new coach yeah. uh, this time around 36.2 crore. And looking elsewhere, Delhi have some work to do with this auction. We mentioned mm -hmm. Rajasthan might have to uh, add uh, some uh, reinforcement too. So just under 21 crore for them. Essentially, Mumbai and uh, Chennai have uh, decided along with Hyderabad that they would just be happy with the core group of players as well as the odd player that they've uh, traded in the window, right? That is pretty much a wrap. Just looking at, at an entire uh, roundup of this, would you be happier going into this auction with a settled squad like Mumbai, Chennai, Hyderabad? Or would you rather bank on, you know, having a lot of money in this auction because that could be... Yeah, I, ideally speaking, you would want to be where SRH and CSK are. I mean, okay. you want to be Hyderabad and Chennai because, you know, you're settled. You don't want to, you know, mm. uh, have, have too many hassles at the auction and before that because it's not just about buying players, it's also getting them together and yeah. getting them to gel as a unit. So that is, is the biggest challenge. Uh, but having said that, the two teams which has uh, the most purse, Punjab and Delhi, well, uh, obviously, there's there's a change in in, in coach and yeah. there's change in that uh, comes naturally almost uh, to me in in, in uh, management as yeah. well in, in in case of Delhi. So obviously, there's a change in the whole uh, mm. policy or the philosophy of the franchise. Yeah, but you'd rather be Chennai or Mumbai. Yeah, or yeah, yeah absolutely. Very well. All right. Absolutely. Many thanks, Deepdas Gupta. Thank so you. many unknown variants of next year's IPL, and therefore we can't pass the final judgment. But you can always uh, catch ESPN Rick and Four to uh, make sure they give you all the very latest and uh, all the news that surrounding the next IPL and the auction. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and leave your comments in the comment section below. Click on the bell icon for notifications.